Hello everybody and welcome back to some more Ultra Mod Nuclear Throne. We are here this time again with Nethernamed. He hasn't been on Nuclear Throne in a little while, but he is you here today. Said, you almost said Multra Mod. Multra Mod. But anyways, we're going to play as Melting today because I feel like having some pain. Um, and we're just going to... Oopsie, I should select my starting weapon if I have the ability to. One second. Um, this isn't eh. how the game was meant to be played, Luke. I might not even have one unlocked. I should check the... I do. Azar. Uh, do I have any skins for him? No, I don't. Um, I don't know what... That, I think that's a laser. No, that that's a laser something or other. And that's... I don't know what that is. Is that a grenade launcher? Maybe? No, the grenade launcher is Grenade launcher's left. there. Let's Maybe try it out. Pop gun? Pop gun could be pretty fun. Let's try that out. It is a pop gun. Right, right. Yeah, the most generic rifle in, in history. Pop, pop. It's going to be a pretty good starter, to be honest, especially if we get shotgun shoulders early on. Man, did you ever realize how useless the term rifle actually is? No. What do you mean? It's, do you just mean it's so all-encompassing that it, it, it's not really worth yes. using? Yeah. Rifle just means it has a rifled barrel. Which is everything. <laughs> Which is every oh. fucking gun these days. Oh, I keep doing but that. Nobody's... Going to the bags nobody's... And... Pulling out their fucking musket and being like, hmm, I'm so superior. Your your fiends are using rifles while I am using the musket. Yeah, I never really thought about that. It's kind of like when people say pistol or the handgun, isn't it? Yeah. Impact wrists. Like, I've realized strong spirit is there, but impact wrists is one of my favorite fucking things in this mod. It's so fun. It got buffed a little bit, and it's very good now. A little bit? A little bit? Yeah. What is, what's the fuck the cracking pistol? Oh, I'll, I'll pick that up in a sec. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't so noticed you already... You pick it up if you get sucked through a portal. If you haven't noticed already, um, it makes it so that enemies that get bounced around destroy walls. Wait, what? Minus two max HP. It lowers enemy HP as well. But I only have two max HP. You gotta try it now. Okay, it just lowers me to one. I respect that. Boom. To be honest, the the functional difference between two HP and one HP. Yeah, I gotta well. say, it's not that it's not that bad, really, is it? You, oh, especially you are like literally it's literally fucked. I could take Rhino skin here, and that that'd help me. When are you gonna get the Everything Hurts achievement? I don't know. That's such a hard achievement to get. When are you gonna do it? I don't even know oh, if it's in this version of the game that I'm playing. You gotta boot up the, the recent version and do like a 48-hour stream until you get Everything Hurts. <laughs> Gosh. I don't think it'll take that long. Like I I I I. Okay. I, I I reckon if I just played Nuclear Throne. Have you been watching your own videos? Oh, though? I know. I'm, I'm pretty. I'm, I've been playing pretty bad recently. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna. Hours is a generous estimate. I'm gonna really focus up over the next like few Isaac episodes and try and actually get a streak going because I am letting the side down. I'm doing so bad on that game recently. Anyone that watches um, Finding of Isaac will know what I'm talking about. Recently, I've either been absolutely plagued by technical issues which is just commonplace for me by now. Or, I've um, been just playing real bad. Hey, you know you walk into the enemy? I'm really liking place. the pop gun to start, it's very good. Especially with that um, bonus to damage that I'm getting. Yeah, um, this is looking good. Oh, dude, I've always Increase your primary fire elbows, rate by 30 percent. I can bend my arms backwards. It would be pretty useful, wouldn't it? I can bend my thumb, my thumbs back further than most people. Or at least that's that's how I understand it. I've not, I've only met a handful of people who can actually do it. Other people seem to treat it like witchcraft. <laughs> and so I sort of like <laughs> have just sort of accepted that I'm. Uh, demonic presence. Seems like it. 
Do you, hey, do you know what would be um, would be good? Last time we were recording Nuclear Throne, you were telling many a fucked up tale about your school and how bizarre your upbringing was. Let's get back to that craziness. <laughs> oh, uh, long story short about my thumb, I would bend it back because I can bend it back far enough and I can bend it behind on the back of my hand. Oh, that's, yeah, and that's... It, it that kinda that is a bit broken. Far. Yeah, that is a bit far. It kind of looks broken, and when I was a kid, I would no. fucking love skill issue. When I was a kid, I would fucking love, like, bending it back as I was doing normal things just to freak <laughs> people out. Like mid-conversation, just like, brrr. There goes like, my I'd thumb again. Normal things. I'd be doing normal things, but with my thumb at a horrid angle. <laughs> I like that. I remember once I was just sitting on a bridge uh, with my uh, hands on the railing and I had my thumbs all fucked. <laughs> and I was at a public park and somebody came up to me like, Are you okay? <laughs> There's a demonic presence in this boy. Someone oh, must save his soul. That's the only functional use I've ever found for it, by the way. <laughs> it's just something my hands do. It sounds pretty weird, but like, for freaking people out, very useful. If that's your prerogative. You know, in the grand scheme of things, having bendy thumbs is one of the, the least impressive bendy joints <laughs> yeah. to have. Like, some people have fucked up knees and elbows, and I'm like, I wish I could do that. All I have are these you wish you were, thumbs. You wish you were even more fucked up, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be allowed to the carnival sideshow. I'd be left to starve. On you'd, be, you'd be on the. the you'd be like one of the. London. One of the little dudes in the in sort of behind of the main of the main act in the carnival. I'd I'd be forced to eat fleas off a rat to survive on the streets because the carnival wouldn't hire me. Oh you. How could you curse? Yes. Oh, for quite fuck's literally. Sake. Quite Rats. literally, I am poor. I am eating fleas off a rat. That is the definition of poverty. You need some big ass fleas. Oh my god, I suck. So hard. Big ass fleas for some big ass rats. <laughs> Does anyone have like a, a medical definition for why I suck so hard recently? I got back from holiday and I just can't game. He went to Greece and suddenly he became really good at sucking. Yeah. I don't know, I think something changed him over there. Something did. It's... It, it, it's something that entered me. Something strange entered you and now you can't get it out. <laughs> it didn't have a flared base. It didn't. It didn't have a rifled barrel or whatever it was. <laughs> I want to get bolt marrow going. You don't have any bolt weapons. But then again, it is the best mutation. So. I don't have any right now, yeah, but, like, just the lure of getting one later makes me want it. Anyways, I told a lot of my school stories last time. You did, yeah, about it being a demonic cult and everything. For those who didn't see that episode, go find it. It's, it's a treat. Remember at one point I was trying to tell you stories about Kiyu Ranch? Yeah, you were. Well, they, sent, they sent us to the ranch and you cut me off and I had to end the episode <laughs> with some wisdom. Um, but, so, Kiwi Ranch is this ranch in the middle of nowhere. It's on the sound, which are a collection of, like, where the land sort of starts to dissolve up near the top of the South Island of New Zealand. It sort of looks like it's disintegrating, <laughs> like turning to dust. Are you okay there, mate? I'm not, I'm not okay. Just ca carry on, just ign ignore the gameplay, just carry on. Ignore the gameplay. Welcome to the Turtle Melon YouTube channel. Please <laughs> ignore, ignore the, the gameplay. Game <laughs> <laughs> uh, the things on screen do not matter here, please ignore them. Um, so, the only like feasible way to get there is by boat. So, 
when I was a kid, they would do these. Essentially, like, uh, you know, a week or so, you'd go there with a bunch of other children and you'd, like, suffer at the ranch. And you suffer at the ranch. <laughs> yeah, what are they doing the to you at the ranch? Uh, you'll see. Um, so, you'd go down to the docks and there would just be a boat waiting there for you. And everyone would put their bags on the baggage boat and get on the passenger boat. Just a second, I've got to sneeze. And at this point, it sounds like we're heading off to an offshore abortion. Clinic. Yeah, it's, it sounds like they're taking you somewhere unsavory. So, it's a boat with like three adults and like 30 children. And they're all like, it's, uh, it's like, I don't, I don't know how to say it, an open plan boat, I guess? An <laughs> open plan boat. Like, Do you mean no it just rooms. doesn't have rooms? There's no rooms in the boat, it's just one big interior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen those before, I, yeah. I know what you mean. I think it only is that way because he has a ridiculously sized ship steering wheel in it. <laughs> like, like, not fun- I, I've driven a boat before, they don't need to be that big, but he just wanted a big fucking steering wheel. Big man, big steering wheel, that's how it goes. Yeah. So he, he yanks the steering wheel left and right and he drives the boat. Oh my god, I suck so hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, uh, he drives the boat and he takes the kids to the ranch and he drives at full speed and the kids all scream because they are having so much fun on the fast boat taking them <laughs> to hell. I, I actually loved it. I would, uh, I would always like sit outside at the very front of the boat and get fucking drenched with <laughs> salt and Lovely. sea spray. Have you ever been on the front of a boat that's moving really yes, fast? Yes, I have. In uh, in Egypt. Have you ever done it for like uh, an hour and a half? Yeah, like when I, when 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 I went to Egypt for like, the first time, I was like seven or eight, um, and basically just sat at the very front of the boat, like a speedboat, while it was going for the entire journey. It was like two hours. Yeah, like, there's something about that that's so entertaining. Yeah, as a, as a child it definitely was. I did it again as an adult, but still entertaining. We should do it sometime, come on. Why do you think I'm gonna go on a okay. boat? Have you seen Britain's water? It's fucking disgusting. No, you come here, and I put oh, you yeah. on the boat that I have access to. Yeah, I mean, that sounds good. And then we, we drive around the sounds, and we actually go to Kiwi Ranch, and we hijack them, and we steal everything they have. We kill Sounds everyone, like and we take me. it for ourselves. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Hey, come over to New Zealand and commit some crimes with me. Hey, come over to New Zealand and we'll start a commune, taken over by force. Sounds like a, a real product. good idea. A content production cult. <laughs> like a YouTuber's house, but it's a YouTuber's cult. Yeah, exactly. It's like prey to the algorithm. <laughs> Actually praying to the algorithm, that's great. The machine gods bless us this day, brother. <laughs> I love that. But, um... So yeah, I would just get caked in salt. By the time I arrived, my hair would always be slicked up, because just from the wind, and it would always it'd be like spiky, because when salt water gets in your hair and dries over yes. and over again... Yeah. It's kind of like a hair gel, isn't it? Just a sec. I will continue onwards. So far, this run's going decently. This this uh, this weapon's pretty good. I mean, I feel like things are going to come to a, a grinding halt soon. I did just take Alkaline Saliva, though, which is basically like a holy mantle for this character from Isley. Because it gives us one free hit a floor. But it's only one for the entire floor, which isn't great. Yes, hello. I'm back. He is back. Um, so... The, uh... The, so I would arrive and I would, my, my skin also would be just covered in salt. Yeah. And it, it's when I sort of started to understand what it, like, why they called people salty old sea dogs. Because they were literally just salty. Yeah, like, if you licked a sailor, 
Oh boy. That would be a that would be a flavor to remember. <laughs> a flavorsome sailor. Yeah. I hear that's the new flavor of uh, of uh, Doritos. Sailor flavored. <laughs> the extra not ready salted. Sailor salted. Oh god! Could you imagine how like it's like a brand of chips that's like just plain salted chips, but they scrape the salt off of genuine, like, like <laughs> free-range, free-range, grain-fed sailors. <laughs> and they, like, put really, like, buff homoerotic imagery on <laughs> sailors, the packaging. Yeah. Fucking sailors like, and they're, like, tighty-whities. Have you ever seen those, like, bizarrely homoerotic images of the TF2 characters? Oh, like yeah, the engineer yeah. and the soldier. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm imagining something like that, but it's just a sailor on a packet of chips, and it's labeled Sailor Salted. <laughs> I love it. Uh, can we can we copyright that? Can we put a patent out on that? I wanna. I'm gonna go down to the docks and see if I can meet some salty sailors. I think it sounds like a plan. It always sounds like a plan. Yeah. Splinter bomb, hell yes, I love the splinter bomb. Yeah, if there's one thing I love, it's some salt and semen. Everyone does. I mean, everyone does. How could you not? Yes. That sounded like way too. It was meant to be clever. It just sounded way too blunt. Sea seamen, like sa like sailors. Sailors. <laughs> Yeah, Everyone like, gets like, it. Like, yeah, I didn't think you, you, didn't, you didn't react, so I thought you just jumped. <laughs> it's unfortunately never the end. Not, not a very original jerk. I don't know if you I got. Know, I don't know if you knew that. I know, but I don't <laughs> think anyone's ever made that implication of, of like. Never. Mind. You could make chips solely out of salt. <laughs> like call them fucking uh, one of, blood <laughs> pressure washers. One of my favorite jerks in um in one of the sketches I watched, Mitchell Webler, is like a sketch where um it's it's like an advert for crisps, but they're called crisps because it's uh it's cress that's been turned into a crisp. And it's like, they're healthy. I can eat them all day because they've retained... When, when you fry them, it seals them up and retains their healthiness. <laughs> and, um, like, they're like, oh, they're lovely. It's like this ad advert for them where everyone's so happy. And the first time someone eats one, they're just like, fuck, they're horrible. I can just imagine something similar for uh, salt-only crisps. <laughs> Get That's something you, like, eat to have you not heard of Crest before? I, I think I've heard of it. It's a microgreen. A what? A microgreen. Have you Just not heard of microgreens either? It. Do you mean an algae? No. <laughs> Have you not heard of micro... Go Google it. You've, you've got Google, haven't you? Google it. Google Crest no, and microgreen. No, you explain. You brought it, it up. You explain. So, Basically, cress. I don't know exactly what it is, but basically they're like little tiny leaves, little tiny like plants. And uh, microgreens are essentially very, very small bits of like lettuce, vegetables, leaf, like leafy stuff that you usually put in like sandwiches or like you use it to garnish things like that. Well, it's just vegetables. It's just small vegetables. Yeah, microgreens. It's just vegetables. It's just vegetables, but less of them. Why the fuck do you need to give it a fancy name? I didn't give oh, it the I name. <laughs> You're kin, dude. You're a culinary person. I blame you. I can't believe you've ever heard of Cress before, though. Cress existed I, before I, the word microgreens did. I've heard of it. I just didn't know what it was, because it's never affected my life. I've That's never fair. needed to know what cress is because I don't. You've really never had an egg. Like you've never had an egg and cress sandwich. They are like I don't go very down common. Down to the here. fucking river and gargle mud.
Okay, this is a good build we've got going on here. Let's not die super early. It was yeah. So as you reach the ranch, things get worse. <laughs> or better. I love it there. Like, I'm praising it like it's a horrific experience. It, it, it was amazing. I'm, I'm actually for um, some people it was a horrific experience, just not for you. Yeah. Uh, I remember that uh, I hated... One, one time I had vivid memories of fucking hating the person I was uh, cabin mate with. Vivid memories of hating them. Yeah, like I hated them vividly. I can still remember what did they do to you? Set. I would. They displeased me. <laughs> just their general aura. I was a child. I didn't have good reasons for why I didn't like people. I was like, you displease me. Off with you. Off with you. Away. Yeah, they, they pair you up in like two to three, they assign you a cabin. And this was a Christian camp. Uh, okay. Now I'm displeased. Dude, what the fuck is that? <laughs> she see how many Game shots design. that dude fired? Holy crap. No, I didn't. I wasn't able to count them. I think it was at least three. I had a really good count. build going there and I accidentally aggravated Big Dog and he just ruined me. I wasn't ready for that. But, um... So... It wasn't a very effective Christian camp. Because they would get children together, and they would be like, Let's talk about Jesus and sing about how Jesus is my superhero. <laughs> Uh, I don't fuck with the lyrics. They sound like the lyrics, to be honest. Oh God, I'm willing to bet they are the lyrics. That was so fucking moronic in hindsight. It's like literally glorifying being a mindless follower. The song is literally repeating, I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Amazing. Real life call of the land. Exactly. You know, Cult of the Land, that game where you put a bunch of children on a boat and take them out to a remote place to teach them about Christianity. <laughs> it's like they'll have to say yes to uh to, to Christianity because of the implication. Yes, if uh if they don't say yes, the ray will get them. <laughs> have you not seen that fucking that scene from Always Sunny in Philadelphia? I haven't watched Always Sunny. Oh, you should, it's so good. Um, th there's a scene where Dennis, who's like one, basically one of the psychopath characters, and he's like, I'm gonna take a girl out to sea um, so we can have sex. And she can't really say no because of the implication. And, and he's like, are you gonna hurt these girls? Like, no, 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 I'd never hurt these girls, but they'll still do it because of the implication that I could hurt them. But I'm n I'd never hurt these girls. They can say no if they want to say no, but they won't because of the implication. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's like, this reminds me of that. It's like, we'll take them to an island and teach them about Christianity. And they'll have to they'll have to accept it because of the implication. Yeah. Thing is, right? The uh, the people who, who led the camp, you weren't allowed to call them by just their name. You weren't allowed to call them Mr. or Mrs. You had to call them uncle and auntie. Ugh. Ugh. I hate that. So, the guy who ran the camp, he was he was this, like, tall, lanky-looking guy. Like, the kind of guy who sort of looks like he's, like, a 70th generation reverend or something. Christianity um, Manny. He was, he was birthed from a pod. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was like, he was like yes, you will all address me as Uncle Toby. Has there been a documentary is... on how you were indoctrinated into this cult? 
I, I what what Catholicism? Because <laughs> no, I don't think this is sounding. This is this is sounding like they were using they were using like normal religion as a way to get you into their cult, <laughs> as a trick, as a ploy. And it wasn't just you would refer to individuals as auntie or uncle. They were the aunties and the uncles. It's like, now remember, if anything goes wrong, you can always talk to the aunties and uncles. It's like... If anything goes wrong. What if the aunties and uncles goes. are the things that go wrong? Apart from a couple, like, really old fucks, the aunties and uncles were all, like, our age. <laughs> They were just people who had nothing better to do. I'm like, yeah, fuck it, I'll go make sure kids don't kill each other. I'll make sure they don't all go Lord of the Flies on the road. Yeah. I'm just trying to think back and remember what I can. So, it was kind of an island, but... It was still connected to the mainland, but there was just a lot of, like, dense brush in the way. Like, you mm. couldn't, couldn't drive vehicles out to it. Yeah. It's basically like, you either take a boat or you hike. It's like on a little peninsula. Yeah, and I, I know what you mean, yeah. Because of the dense woodland, it was effectively an island. Because no child is going to walk into <laughs> yeah. the woods. To escape They're, it, yeah. I have a, they have a better chance of walking into the sea. They're not escaping anytime soon. But animals just came and went out of the woods. Oh, I suppose it's, the cabin. I just thought South Coast is quite some some exotic wildlife over there, isn't there? Damn it. There is, but the type that was gravitated to the camp wasn't exactly exotic. It was two goats, a deer, and some pigs. Uh. <laughs> two goats were kind of like, uh, I don't want to say perverts, but they would just watch. They would like sit on the hilltop and watch. Um, the deer would come out at night and try to get into cabins whose doors weren't shut correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Because the deer knew that when people came, went to the ranch, they brought snacks with them. <laughs> the deer had been waiting all year for this to come back around. Yes. And if you left your door shut when everything, or door like a jar when everything was peaceful, like. You'd come home to find a deer. <laughs> You would either come back to find a deer in your cabin, you would come back to find just everything everywhere and a shit in your bed, or you would be like sleeping and you would wake up to an animal trying to force the door open. Fucking hell, that sounds horrible. In, like, was it always the same deer or was it multiple deers? It was the same one. It had just learned that people brought food with them. And the food was in the in the cabins, and if the doors weren't shut, it could get in. <laughs> okay, now. And also, like up until midnight, they would have people patrolling the grounds with uh, torches to make sure no children were sneaking out at night. Make sure the deer wasn't sneaking up on any children. Running away with a child with its teeth. Yeah. <laughs> That's a large snack. That's a snack that lasted a while. But yes, so they would actually shine the torch in the window at the sleeping children to make sure they were all asleep. To just waking them up, essentially. Yeah. Sometimes they would open the fucking door if they thought, like, you were up to something. Were, they were, were kids often up to things? It's a, it's a, like a camp. Kids are excited. They don't want to go to bed at bedtime. They're gonna well, stay yeah, up. Well, yeah, but they're not. I, I realize they're gonna stay up, but leaving the camp. Did, did many of them leave? I remember sometimes some kids would try to go outside at night, but they would always get corralled back in. 
a group and um, just go out on their wayward way into the woods. And they never heard from again. The deer got him. Yep. <laughs> but. So. I remember once I was actually caught by one of these guys. I just, like, I'm reading a book at, like. Like, it's like 11 p.m. I'm reading a book because I don't want to sleep because I'm an annoying child. And. I just hear the door opening and I can't put it away in time. And I'm just face to face with a guy with a torch. He's like, yeah, you're supposed to be asleep, right? But like, yes. <laughs> he's like, he looks at the cover and he's like, Agatha Christie. Nice. <laughs> Carry on then. He just let me continue because he liked the book I was reading. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I like... I can understand that you're supposed to be in bed at a certain time, you're supposed to be asleep at a certain time, but if you're reading, you're not disturbing anyone, you're doing something that's, that's like, that is encouraged for kids to do, it's like, I really don't feel like they have any precedent to tell you to stop. They were supposed to, but they just didn't. <laughs> because like, each day was like segmented, they like set up activities and you would be assigned a, an aunt or an aunt or your uncle to take you to take a group of you, the little blighters between events. And like the events would just be sometimes very strange. They could be some really bizarre activities. Remember. Like, one of them was just like, okay, so for this event, we're gonna go and pile up rocks on the beach. Mm -hmm. We're gonna see how high we can get the piles. <laughs> and that's it. And that's your entertainment that was today. It. Rocks. It was just like, the activity was like, today we're gonna be making fucking cans. So basically what, what, what you're saying is, they had no idea what the fuck to do with you, so they just pick a random piece of shit idea out of a hat and go with that one. Yes. God damn. I, I've been to a few camps before, but they were, they were decent. They were not too bad. It was, it was fun purely because it was different. Yeah. And it was just out in the middle of nowhere. Change of environment. Was you there with anyone you knew as well? I actually met people there who I would become friends with at the time. I don't talk to them anymore, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I did actually meet friends at that camp who were repeat visitors like me. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so, so it was like a good time to see friends you wouldn't normally see and stuff. Yeah. And... One of the events I remember was just like burning shit. Like, that sounds they great. Had, they, they'd, they'd set up a bonfire on the beach, and it was later in the day. They'd set up a bonfire on the beach, and they're like, Now, kids, if you find any driftwood, immolate it. <laughs> it was just like, right. I don't know, enjoy the ecstasy of conflagration. <laughs> it seems healthy enough, just give children things to burn. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And like, at one point people were like, I want to throw deodorant on it. Oh no. And one of the uncles was like, Sure. <laughs> I'm supervising, so. You could tell how like little some of them cared about like the camp and the board, the safety. Oh yeah, yeah. I like, imagine there's a lot of people there that were just kind of forced to be there and didn't want to be. What if it was caught ordered? <laughs> Imagine if he was like a sex offender and his court ordered like the service was corralling children in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it's like, well, as punishment for being a sex offender, what we've done is we've decided to put you on an island with children with very limited other adults and no parents. This is the one thing we didn't want to happen. <laughs> That'll teach him. But, um... So the guy was like, yeah, he took some, a, like a deodorant, he made everyone stand back, and he just walks up to the bonfire and chucks a deodorant can on it, 
and we just watch it explode. Oh, that sounds satisfying, but dangerous. But what he didn't realize is that meant that every single child would start running back to their cabins oh, to get no. their deodorant and going, do it again, do it again. <laughs> and so he, he had like a, a horde of ravenous children be like, blow it up, next. explode and it. One of, them, one of them had fucking stick deodorant. <laughs> He's got a fucking roll on deodorant. He's like blowing up. That's so funny. Oh god! You're what an idiot. Memories. It's been so long since I've thought about this. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> just this one kid just being absolutely like bamboozled why his didn't explode. <laughs> the guy only threw like like two or three on the fire before he was like, okay, no, we can't keep doing this. One, I'm pretty sure you just borrowed that deodorant from your parents. So, uh, you're probably gonna notice the loud bangs if we keep this up. Yeah. Oh, another one of the events was just fishing. That's not too bad, but for kids it's a bit bit dull. They had a, a, a wharf, like a dock, not a not really like a proper wharf, but a dock at the run that the boat docked at, obviously. Yeah. But no shit, they had a dock. <laughs> They had, like, a bit, they had a road that the birds drove up. But it was like only loosely held in place. It was like a floating dock. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, know, I know the song. So when you put like six children on one side of it, the shit starts to feel pretty unstable. Mm. Multiple children fell into the water. <laughs> it's just I don't character think I ever caught building. a single fish. I don't think I ever caught a single fish. Was the fish even but there? They're just making you fish and there's actually no fish in the water. There was some form of ray there. Oh, really? I don't. I, I never saw it directly, so it might be an urban legend. But I did see a dark shape in the water. It's probably just some cryptid. But they, would, they had this. They claimed that there was a ray that lurked around the pier and they gave it a name. Like, apparently some sort of ray. They called it a stingray. I don't think stingrays, like, live here. I think it was a different kind of ray that they mm. just called a stingray because children are stupid. Yeah. Um, so that, but because they called it a stingray, children were like, if you fall off the wharf, you're going to get stung and die. Was this post or pre-Steve Irwin? You're going to be like Steve Irwin. <laughs> Of course it was first, Steve Irwin. You're young. But like... <laughs> Just even these small things, these small memories. They had a, a water slide there. Yeah. That was not open once. <laughs> I, I went there multiple times across multiple years. And it was never All available. All different seasons, it was never open once. Oof. Fuck it out. <laughs> because oh. like it just it was it wasn't safe. It was like rough. So un what you're telling me plastic. is a kid definitely died on it. <laughs> it was probably haunted. <laughs> <laughs> Normally if things are never ever open again, it's usually because someone died on it. Well, it, like, emptied into what was... It was meant to be filled with water at the bottom, right? Yeah. But the basin that it emptied into was made out of just, like, rough concrete. Oh, uh, okay. So, like, be if there was... Or anything. If, if there was water in it, you might be okay. But just the image, it looked like it was meant to be filled with blood. Like, from grated children. Oh, that came God. down the slide. Oh, a lot of good memories. There's more stories if you want to keep going. Like, if you have the time. I don't have much time now, unfortunately. I was oh. only expecting this episode to be, be about half an hour, and it's a bit longer than half an hour. I Oh, come on. What have you got? What? <sighs> I've got, like, three more recordings to do today, and I have to leave at five, and it's now two o'clock. So I've got three hours to do three recordings. Oh, you're kicking me off before I even get to the good part. I but know, but, 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 but it's fine, though, because it leaves people in suspense, and we'll continue next about, time. About the, about the hog runs. <laughs>
<laughs> we'll leave people in suspense and we'll come back to it. Yeah, do let me know yeah, if you, you enjoy want... these ones when they're named. I'm sure you do. I, I do Tune at least. Tune in next time if you want to learn about the hog runs. <laughs> yeah, this, it sounds. It definitely sounds interesting. I enjoy like the camp stories. They're good. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode nonetheless. I do apologize for cutting cutting it a little short. Well, I say short. It's it's longer than the average nuclear throw an episode. So. Either way. Uh, but yeah, I've got like three more Isaac videos to do before the end of today. And I was supposed to go to gym. So I'm going to have to try and fit that in somewhere, somehow. Either way, I hope you guys enjoy this one. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.